The Devil's Charity by Robert D. Turville. Chapter 1. Don't get me wrong, I'm not after sympathy, I'm not making excuses. I made my choices the same as everyone else. We all have free will, I guess that's the point. I put a gloss on the way I used to be. I like to. You soon get through it. you not daft, but I've changed. Finally, through getting you to believe me, is a tough call. At the end, my end, I don't know, not yet. One thing, though, this is my first and final account, my testament. If it gets through, you understand. You're, be, you're beyond God. They won't suck you in. To, as to the beginning, two words, catastrophic panic, a whole gaggle of emotions, infinitely worse than being falsely drowned in a swamp infested with raffinous vermin. You think I have remembered that what that what had caused it? You think I have categorized it right at the top of the never be forgotten pole? Fact is, I haven't a clue. Neither did I know how, why, when, or where it had happened, or how long, whatever it was, had lasted. After, after all, about all I could recall was my given name, Ronald. I wasn't so sure about my surname. I think it was Foster. It sounded vaguely right. I figured I was in my forties. Maybe give it or take a decade or so plus direction. It doesn't seem to matter. I have written off the whole thing as a nightmare. It would have been if it hadn't been for the pains. My brain felt like a hot kebab sewers being poked about. A hunt for tasty morsels, and the clamping of my eyes shut didn't help. It only sparked off the other bits that hurt, like my chest and legs and arms. No idea what was up with them, but I cheerfully had swapped places with an outconditioned marathon runner, stuck at the crest of his pain barrier. Bottom line, something devastating had happened, something inordinately brutal and terrifying. Even so, I had to manage the fallout and wait. For my brain to wiggle into first gear, so I, could, so I convinced myself I didn't question how it, I could be so calm, so accepting. I realised I was in a what, 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 great oak panelled room. I wasn't alone. The vibes told me this wasn't where it happened. A panic. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. No, I can tell you what. I couldn't tell you why. There were about thirty men there. There, women, people there. Men and women, women, all sorts of ages, all like me in the armchairs, spaced around the biggest conference table I've ever seen. Still the biggest I could remember. This isn't saying much. So it was hardly polished, a really amazing a thing that nagged me in the spot that was a top spot. It was empty. I reckon it would have been in it, which was odd considering I could have sat there like a chump and sucked my thumb. How could I have said? A single person let there, let alone hold them, and there was odd. There was, there was an odd as well. The room excluded an uneasy mixture of electric, eccentric grandeur, the impact emphasized by the excessiveness of the ornate doorways. Though nothing was familiar, I picked up a connection. It was unnerving as well as odd. When a door cracked open, the head of the room, a concealed door, it startled me. Not for long. Impulse. Made me, instinct made me stand tall and straight. Impulse made me check my suit, to my relief. It felt right, as did my fine felt tail. Whether by sixth sense or something else, I knew the proper knew the proper clothes, good quality stuff. Made a man and woman know too. For what that matter, though I didn't know who was coming in, didn't. They weren't about to catch me looking less than my physical and sorry as best. That was certain. There was a pause if someone was seizing in the lull. I whispered, not, not notice the door to the guy to the guy beside me. Truth is, I thought he had forgotten it. I didn't answer. He didn't answer. He was too busy starting staring at the ageless woman that swept in while I was talking. He was blatantly ogling. Everyone was, and I did too, even my hollowed out memory. I certain I'd never seen such a black hair mass of sculptured in a glorious mane. Couldn't help it. 
none too discreetly. I said, wow, one look and turned into me a soppy, pre-present boy. If she heard, she gave me no sign. Neither did she flinch the barrage of other eyes upon her. Made me cringe. Every pair looked serious behind a thin mask of priority. Men, women and men alike. Having settled her gaze back at each of us in turn, saving the best till last, a moment she looked at me, my pains faded. Finally, I couldn't breathe any, uh, easy. No voice came this time, but I mouthed the w- word, wow, as I fixated on it, and her, and her, which I was, as I watched, she filled her lungs, swelling her furry red dress. My eyes were still engrossed when she spoke. My name is Charity. That's not my original name. I chose. It's because I'm committed, I feel, that those we serve are relish on my mission. Our mission to provide a new support. Couldn't believe it when some people sniggered, made me scowl, offended for her. All from manners, yet the intrusion reminded me I wasn't alone. It also nudged me and fought my, I fought my way. I had to know some of the people in the room. I spent a measured glance around, hoping finding a face I recognised. Others were going the same. Some looked disturbingly scared. Made me wonder if we all had memory problems. A few of you know me. Charity went on, her bewitching, but most of you are friends in waiting who won't, don't be here yet. I listened intently, a voice exactly as I imagined, and identify, identify deniably exciting, enticing as she was undoubtedly, dentally beautiful, emitting me. I had nothing but air castles to back it up. I was reckoned I was the one but of the few who knew her. She seemed tantalisingly familiar, like my fancy woman come to life. Except I didn't realise, remember having a fancy woman or any special woman come to that. Annoyingly, my throat sprang a tickle. Normally, I had coughed about multiple instincts, causing me to bottle it. Then they piled in with all sorts of other converted prods. I knew her. That egged me. Egged. I must, I must, might have forgotten her and forgettable tresses, but I am more right most to be there. Why shouldn't I cough and damn the consequences? I caught myself being stupid and couldn't afford stupidity. What mattered was getting grip. I had to remember something else to be, I would be worse off than a lamb's spoofed up for the slaughter. Charity spoke again, her voice like a knife murdering my mental ramble. Other charities provide the death of blood. Provide for the death of blind in general. We are concerned exclusively with the poten- with the poten- potentially blind and, t- part- and partially deaf. She spread her eloquent fingers on the table and nails for every moment. Our aim is to make a difference. We will never forget those who depend on us. Always guard against those who would uh, us have us fail. To most discuss, the early sniggers became more often ch- open chuckling. It came from three people in their fifties and an impeccable entire male and female, the other a ramp who looked like around twenty. I have expected Charity to say something in a place sort of wipe the floor with them. It seemed to me she, I, to me I would. Yet a perfect poise made them diminish. She didn't do much to shame them the glare. She merely waited for them to quieten. And we are a team. And we have a good team, but each of us has a role to play. You looked, she looked directly at me, but I said, Frank, thinking she crossed her eyes, I said, name's Ronald, Ronald Foster, but Ronald, Ronald Foster. She came out at once. Then I'm not talking to you, am I? To, to, took me with a I could tell you. Made me blink. I want a snow shrieking bonnet. I told her from the hip, you're not, you look at me, I thought. You didn't think, she chucked against me. You assumed you presumed I find it I find it offensive. As she spoke the pains of my head switched on again, swiftly followed by renewed aches. All around my body I winced though I really wanted to cry out. I think I said sorry. Stress that's your problem, she diagnosed. As if she had a cure for sure fired on its qualifications. You poke your nose where it's not invented. And you invited, and you get worked up when, about things that don't concern you. This is it. Whoever had, she was, she was no fancy woman of mine. Pain stroked my embarrassment by, up to anger. She was a class A bitch. Needed to get, shit, get me straight. I pointed these people are laughing a minute ago as, 
but they didn't. You didn't. But they didn't off, didn't offend you. All I did was presume. She act, cutting icily. These people are so ugly. Call it go along. Of my friends, it means insolent. And insolence is not an all that they're about. I expect from a team player of yours a caliber that spun me to ban off balance. Made me think that she might be dressing out some kind of black handed component. After this, after it, but it was, if she was, it was a way of target. Of humiliating me to the public, a sop felt like poisonous nettles rubbed into my open wound. You call this a team, I threw back. It's a bunch of idiots, but who bust too reckless to wipe their own noses. The rest of the crackling hyenas. But we couldn't believe it when she smiled, just a faint closing of the lip. What a def- but a definite smile. She spoke to the- this other guy. A task of embarked for Ronald. What be yours, Frank? I rather I rather thinking he looked like a loser. A sheepish whoever do to do boo a goose loser. That was it. A wrenching spasm burst across my entire re- abdomen. Felt like my intestines had been drawn out and twisted into the various knots. Couldn't bear it. Pain ditched me off. My chair H- had me writhing about hands calling the carpet so convulsed. As a convulse, the agony ended abruptly as it began. I was mighty glad. At least I was still, as I realised, I'm back in my, uh, my chair. Everyone else, it's noth- as if nothing had happened. I was still struggling with a fresh bout of disorganisation set 